We are now in the home stretch of Bethesda Game Studios' next major release, Starfield. The game has gone gold, some lucky influencers have early access to the game, and preloading the software has begun for anyone who already purchased a copy. I've been mostly quiet on the game and its development. I put out a single video after the summer presentations in 2022, touching on some of my concerns, but we know a lot more now. I thought, why not come back and talk about what I'm expecting out of Starfield and what videos, if any, I'll make for the game. Well, let's start with what I expect. I've watched plenty of the extended coverage and interviews about what sort of game Bethesda is trying to make here. I'm not into the business of condensing all the information they already put out there though, so what I'll focus on is giving context for the things that I care about and potential concerns. First things first, RPG. Main story is not my focus, neither do I think it should be for anyone else playing a Bethesda game, but to each their own. I come to Bethesda for open worlds with lovingly handcrafted environmental storytelling, and I stay because of a role-playing system that's deep and robust enough that I can do repeat playthroughs tackling all the quests and challenges in an entirely different way. Specifically, I look for the ability to focus on a radically different form of combat that's never my first choice. Moreover though, those different styles of play have to be supported by the rest of the game's mechanics. For instance, if you specialize in, say, using handguns, but you would never find enough ammo by just looting and instead have to buy all of your bullets, well, in my opinion, that's a major game flaw, especially if just looting is good enough for many other types of weapons in the game. This directly intersects with what I'm not showing up to a Bethesda game for. Base building. I understand that this is something many people live for, and I do the same with many other games. Base building is a big and fun thing to engage with, but if you're forced to play Outpost Engineer before you can really get to the deep part of the role-playing system, again, not what I'm here for. Bethesda games are unique for how expansive they are in their mechanics. You can shoot, punch, stab, stealth, or talk your way out of many situations, and those abilities are supported by the ability to loot, craft, or purchase things you need. To that effect, the expansiveness cuts both ways. Basically, if you want to engage with one mechanic but not another, that should be okay. The game's design will hinge on if there are mechanics you're forced to interact with, regardless of how you build your character. Going back to the handgun example, you're going to need bullets. The question is, will the game allow you to get enough bullets through multiple different means all throughout the game, start to finish? If you focus on adventuring and looting, and level up the appropriate skills that match that playstyle, then the game needs to supply you with what you need to keep playing that way. However, if the game demands you can only manufacture enough of the ammo to reliably use it all the time by engaging with outpost building, then it's actually a pretty big problem. In other words, the secondary support system in the game needs to support multiple playstyles from beginning to end. It makes sense to be a gunslinger who can trade, or a gunslinger who can manufacture, but a gunslinger who can't loot enough to feed their itchy trigger finger? That just doesn't make any sense. The core of what I'm getting at here is, Starfield is a game that's being advertised based not only on the size of its world, but also on the diversity of things you can do within it. If the game forces you to interact with an entire fleshed out system, one that you have little to no interest in, that is a problem. For me, this became an issue in Bethesda's last game, Fallout 4, with settlement building. It was a fun thing to engage with the first and second time I played the game, but after that I got sick of rebuilding the same settlements over and over. I could make an entire video over this, and I probably should, but the more you try to avoid crafting in Fallout 4, the more you realize how much of the game is built centrally around it. What I'm saying is, I hope that Starfield is a truly a la carte system. If I don't want to deal with building starships, don't make me. If I don't want to engage in ship-to-ship -ship combat, don't make me. If I don't want to deal with the tedium of staffing a starship, don't make me. It should be possible for my character to bypass some of these features to some degree. 
hire out someone else to build the ship, let me run away from space fights, pay someone else to staff and manage the ship crew. Just because it's a new mechanic doesn't mean it can't get tedious, and I'll never want to ignore it to just go out and adventure. Even if I have to deal with the system or the mechanic it's built around, at least let me auto-manage the tedium. Don't get me wrong, either. These worries I have may be completely unfounded. The only people who really know what's in the game are people who have played it, which is a limited number right now. To that end, production of videos for Starfield is something I'll probably do. Usually, when I get a new game like this, I stream as much of it as I can before making videos, and I just explore at my own pace. By the way, you can watch me at twitch.tv slash williamstrife when I start my adventures, and there's an archive channel for my streams here on YouTube. It's at willstrifelive. Check the description for links. Anyways, this time, however, my goal is to try and learn the game and break it. That's not something I really ever do with games these days, specifically because I'm the type of player who loses interest when the main quest or story ends. This time around, though, I've decided to mainline the story and get that over with as fast as possible. Then, so long as things remain fun, I'll charge forward with anything I see that's new and interesting. If Starfield somehow misses the mark of enjoyment, though, and it just makes my brain turn off and eyes glaze over, well, I can't guarantee any videos will be forthcoming. I'm hopeful there's something here that will scratch an itch for me. Even though I have worries, I see no reason why there wouldn't be either. After all, I've spent enough time in No Man's Sky to know I enjoy space sims plenty. Also, I know Bethesda burned a lot of goodwill with players after the disaster that was Fallout 76, but that game wasn't a typical Bethesda experience for a lot of back-end development reasons. Suffice to say, I view Starfield as the first actual, full-form Bethesda game we are getting since Fallout 4. And while I still have my hang-ups with that game, I still think the core development team is good at what they do, even if, in my opinion, some of the ways they branch out and experiment don't pan out. In the end, what I'm really expecting out of Starfield, at least at launch, is basically the same experience we got out of Fallout 4. A game whose content is all finished. The program will have rough edges and bugs of varying degrees that need ironing out. Then, soon after, Bethesda will publish the official mod toolset, so people can make it the game they want it to be, instead of the game the devs envisioned. This is the quintessential Bethesda launch experience, and there's really nothing to indicate that we're going to get anything different. I could carry on and say more, but that's my sentiment as we head into the early and full launch of Starfield. Thanks for watching and listening, and I want to thank all of my monthly supporters at Strife.Solutions. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without you. Until next time, though, I'll see you later.